Welcome to our talented agents and investors from across the country. Today is Thursday, February 10th, 2022, and this is All the Leads Mastermind Podcast number 365. So we now have a year's worth of podcasts. If, none of, if any of you have no life and you want to listen to a podcast today, you could keep uh, busy for an entire year. So I think that's kind of a significant milestone. Um, we do have two people in the queue. We Plenty of room for more. Just hit star six and hit one. Uh, partners, anybody have anything they want to share? I do. Tim? Uh, I'll start off. Um, just a, one important thing. Uh, if you're on the call uh, and being a faithful listener, as you should be, uh, last week you'll be aware that we introduced our uh, pre-probate product uh, to great success. Uh, we've had tons and tons of people already do that. We've got some counties already moving into wait list uh, status because we won't take on any more subscribers in those counties for that product. Uh, if you did not take advantage of that, you will have a limited time to take advantage of the subscribers only discount. There'll be an email that goes out at dropping at two o'clock today that explains a lot more of the details. I'm not going to do it again this time. Uh, you, you can either listen to the last podcast or as I said, there'll be an email, watch your email for two o'clock. That's when it should drop. So shortly after that, you should receive something. Please don't get shut out. You're only going to have uh, until the 17th to take advantage of getting them at the subscribers only discount. At that point, this will be open to the public and we expect to sell it out. So we're very much looking forward to, uh, you know, participation in that program. Uh, we're excited about it. We know it's a great program and, uh, looking forward to having you in it. That's all I have, bud. Awesome. Bruce. Um, so I, I sent those of you that attended uh, Probate Foundations last week. I did send that um, email out with the replay of uh, of that class, and uh, di I've heard already from a couple of people that they didn't receive that. So um, if you haven't gotten the replay of the Probate Foundations class and you were there or you did register, please check your spam folders. Um, if you've never been to a Probate Foundation class, we will, uh, and you sign up, we'll send you, you guys a copy of a replay as well. Uh, but we do ask that you sign up and come take uh, the class first or at least get registered for the class. I just wanted everyone to know that um, if you were a part of uh, last month's or last week's Probate Foundations class, and you didn't receive an email, check your spam, or and if you don't see it there, come back to me. I'm not sure why a couple of people didn't get that. And that's all I have. Perfect. Bruce, um, I think I saw a note from you or a post from you that um, I, I think it's supposed to be a about a two-hour session, and I, I saw a post from you at uh, one of them ran more like long, like Mastery used to. It was, like, you know, a couple of days, right? It went, <laughs> it went, way, it went way long, but... Um, and the reason I make that point is there, there is there's foundational material in every one of your courses that you're always going to go over, but that, that's the beauty of the open interaction with with all of our subscribers out there. Every class is going to be a little bit different, and as long as you're a subscriber, correct me if I'm wrong, Bruce. You can you can and you know a lot of people probably should take the class more than once. Would would you agree with that? Oh yeah, we have people take it three, four, five times. I've seen um I've seen several people there way over six times and we've only been doing it for maybe eight months or so. So there there are uh, there, there are people that show up um almost every time. Yeah, and it I I think it's thousands of dollars worth of great uh, material. It's great interaction with people that are doing the same thing as you and it is completely free to all of our subscribers. So Thank you for that. Chuck, what words of wisdom would you like to add before we get to our callers? Well, I think there was a theme over the past week where many of our coaching calls were really focused on how to develop relationships with probate attorneys. And I took, you know, for, for me and my own business, I had the opportunity for Friday cocktail hour with a, an attorney whose cousin is a probate attorney. And you know, the person that I was having conversations with and basically laid out my specific model. And, and it really, having that conversation was like, oh, well, you need to talk to this person, this person, this person, and this person. So 
even if you're even if you're going to meet with an attorney that's not specifically focused, their core business is in estate planning, elder law, or probate um, probate cases. You're connecting to them so you can connect to their network. And I think it's really important. One of the one of the key messages that I've really been thinking about this week is you need to really look in the mirror and as an investor or an agent and you know choose how are how are you going to present your identity to the world. And I I've said this for years. You need to be a walking talking real estate investor. You need to be a walking talking real estate agent. And in this case, be a walking talking probate solutions provider. And had a follow up, had another meeting on Monday morning, sat down and laid out exactly how my business model is set up and how I'm able to help people overcome the obstacles in the probate process. And they say, wow, dude, this is really needed in the market. So please be reassured when you're out there and you're looking to make these types of connections that there are some gaps in the marketplace to be able to provide the services and the help that uh, we teach in the probate foundations class as well as you know in the the monthly strategy coaching calls there is a need for the services that we can provide and you just really need to be out there talking to everybody and bring it up into conversation if you want to um, learn more about how i specifically do it schedule that coaching call I'm here to be able to help you guys. Don't leave these leads sit in your inbox. Don't leave them sit in your account and not do anything with it. The time is now to get up and start working these leads because if you work it, they do work for adding zeros into your bank account. Awesome. And every time one of you guys says something, it 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 uh gets another thought going with me. Sorry, Bruce, I interrupted you. Uh just real no, quick, I was going to uh yeah, okay. Uh, just to follow up to what you said, Bruce, um, you know, you were sitting down with an attorney and, and maybe the the deal or the deals didn't come directly from him. It came from another attorney or attorneys he knows. Same thing back when I was selling many years ago, um, one of my first coaches instilled in us that every month we had to call everybody we knew, basically our sphere of influence and say, who do you know? So, you know, besides just working the leads, um, everybody you know knows somebody who is going to die and who is going to have some real estate and need to sell it. So add that to your sphere of influence conversations if you're having them. And if you're not, it's a real good reason to pick up the phone and say, hey, you haven't spoken to you in a while. Hope everything's going great with the house and just want to let you know this uh, great niche that I've gotten into. And, you know, who do you know that might need our help? Uh, my help now or in the future. And Bruce, I know uh, Tim wants to say anything, say something, but I think I walked over you first. Go ahead, Bruce. Well, I started walking on you. Um, so I, I wanted to jump in on what um, Chuck just said. He, he referenced that uh, the attorney that he was meeting with was not a probate attorney. I'm not sure what kind of attorney it was. It doesn't really matter. Um, you don't have to specifically target probate attorneys. Yes, those are the attorneys that you're you're most likely going to get direct business from. But uh, there's this concept that many of you have heard, many of you benefit from called social proof. And if you call a probate attorney that doesn't know you from Adam, you call them and say, hey, I have a service, uh, I want to help you. Um, yes, maybe they're going to take that meeting, maybe they're going to take that call and be interested, but there's no better way to make that introduction than to have someone talk about you, to brag about you. It offers this social proof that immediately makes you more credible in the eyes of the person that you really want to go after. And this is why I like to talk to all kinds of different attorneys, whether they're estate planning and probate attorneys or not. Talk to them about what they do because they're going to know the other attorneys that you want to get in, uh, get in with. Um, they're going to be the ones that when they introduce you, um, you're going to have a much higher likelihood of having a strong, impactful conversation because you're introduced to the estate planning or the probate attorney from someone who they already know and trust. Perfect. Tim? One thing I was going to say is that I forgot to mention that we have now scheduled a pre-probate training class uh, for the 23rd of February for pre-probate subscribers only. 
that will be at 11 o'clock in the morning. It's an unusual time for us to do that, but that coincided with my schedule and Bruce's, so we can do it then. So at 11 a.m. on the 23rd, if you already uh, have your pre-probate subscription in, know that that's the time to do it. If you're planning to get that done today or sometime between next uh, now and the 17th, which is this time next week, uh, mark that on your calendar, the 23rd of February uh, at 11 a.m. And that's all I have. And, Jim, let's get to the people in the queue. Absolutely. And that's 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. And uh, right. just to follow up, Tim, if they if they are a subscriber, uh, pre-probate subscriber, they'll get an invitation. They don't need to do anything. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm just having them mark their calendar so that, you know, they don't schedule a colonoscopy for that time, Jim. Oh, this would be so much more fun. So that that's good advice. All right, guys, we have we have two in the queue. Room for more. Hit star six and hit one. And let's jump to our first patient caller of the week. Phone number ending in 2860. You're up first. Well, this wasn't going to be the question that I was going to ask, but since you guys started talking about attorneys, I guess I'll go ahead and ask it since it was on my mind um, a, few, a few days ago. Sure. So th there's uh, one or two attorneys that I've been able to talk to about, you know, the probate solution thing. And they love what they hear and everything else. The only negative feedback I got, if you want to call it that, is uh, they say, well, um, you know, it's unethical for us to refer our clients to a specific um, realtor or, you know, what, what do you, how, what's, what's the way around that? <laughs> Build more no, value. Not. Hardly an unethical thing for them to do. They may not want to do it, and they're blowing you off with that kind of remark. Uh, attorneys make references, make referrals all the time to people to get work done. If they know a trusted agent or a trusted investor or any of that, big job, a big part of an attorney's business is word of mouth and referral business. Not that they're looking necessarily to make money out of it, but um, mm -hmm. and you know, not that they're looking for kickbacks. But attorneys refer people all the time. Uh, you know, yeah, and, you just need in a lot of in a, in a lot of states, it's illegal for them to advertise to solicit business from them for themselves. But there's a big difference in somebody they're speaking to referring somebody. I mean, they 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 have a fiduciary to do what's best for their client, and if they honestly believe that, that it's not like you're bribing them, if they honestly believe that you are the best. Uh, uh, thing for their client, I, I I can't see how that wouldn't be good ethics. I I think it's uh, yeah, either a confused attorney or somebody who's just blowing you off, like Tim said. That would be my guess. Okay. Every, never okay. ever heard that before. Not once in the whole time we've been doing that. I've really never heard anybody say. Uh, now you know, again, if they're confusing it with a paid referral, that's a different story. But uh, yeah, I would be my response would be real quickly. Well, I'm not looking to make this some sort of a monetary transaction, I want you to know that I do a great job. And my whole uh, purpose in telling you this and trying to establish this relationship is I'm going to help you get this closed quicker. If you happen to be a family attorney and, you know, you're dealing with someone in probate, you, you want to get that uh, wrapped up as quickly as you can. And I've got a great team of people that help get that process done. My clean-out crews, my estate sales crews, all those people, that's music to the ears of an attorney who's handling probate. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, so, if I could ask I'm the original question I called about, go oh, go ahead. Uh, no, Bruce, go ahead. Bruce on, wanted to. Let's keep going on that one. I, yeah, Bruce, yeah, go ahead. I want to keep going on that one. The, the truth is, is that you meet someone new who you don't know. You have a meeting with them. They're a probate or estate planning attorney. It's not uncommon for them to have a little bit of a lack of um, not trust. It's not as though they distrust you. They just don't trust you. And uh, it's not uncommon for them to give you sort of a blow off like that. The uh, question that, that you should kind of ask yourself is, is are they just sort of brushing me off because we don't know each other well yet? Or have I uh, not established enough value? Have I not presented my services in a way that they, um, that they, that kind of draws them to refer me? Um, it usually takes me multiple 
meetings and conversations with an attorney to start getting getting their business anyway. So I wouldn't be overly stressed about um, about someone not sending you business instantly. Um, but if they're telling you I can't refer you because that's unethical, then that's a clear sign to me that they're brushing you off or they're insanely uninformed, which is possible. Uh, but they're probably brushing you off, which means you need to go about building more value, more credibility over time with that individual or those individuals. Okay. Okay. That makes uh that makes sense. Thank you. Um the yep. original so, the the original reason why I called the original question to ask, I guess, was um I've I've heard the uh the interview or the conversation with um I think it was it was a while back with Chad and another attorney. What questions to ask attorneys on on like a uh, like a Zoom conference thing um, to use as a uh, I don't know as as a way to provide value on a YouTube or a Facebook channel something like that. What are good questions to ask uh, somebody who um, uh, somebody who who does who does titles who does who does titles sorry to ask yeah like uh, like um like how can how can a title company um excuse me I meant to say title company um like what are great questions to ask a title company to as as far as how they pro, how, how they can help families um that are going through probate are there great questions is there anything about that on on uh atl is am i asking something that's pointless here here would be my uh my question is um what um uh what would your purpose and, and i agree that you need to know a title company or a closing attorney if you're in an, an attorney state um so i would agree with that but my question would be, what what um, what would your objective be of having that sit down with a title company in your um, in your state? Because by the time they get a deal, it's under contract and already headed to close. So I don't really see that being a circular benefit back to you. And I'm not okay. saying that you only want people that only benefit you. What I'm saying is. Like, I, I don't think that that's the individual that you're wanting to pitch your service to because they they get the deal after there's already an investor agent already involved in, in a locked, locked in agreement. Okay. So okay. if I'm thinking about it incorrectly, um, please, please um, correct me. I'm, I'm totally, if you can give me a, uh, give me a good benefit well, to uh, go I'll after give title. You, I, I guess I'll, I'll tell you why I'm asking that. Because I was on a call this morning with um, other uh, real estate agents, and the broker had um, someone from a title company speaking about probate. I was kind of surprised that they were talking about probate, and so I was thinking, okay, is there a benefit to interviewing somebody like that? That's, I guess that's why, is because that was on the top of mind, and I was kind of surprised that they were... Well... I think this is, this is Chuck. Go ahead, Chuck. I think, yeah, I think one of the main questions would be is, is like, okay, why would somebody need an, an experienced title company specifically for probate? What are some of the title issues that might come up in a transaction that a personal representative would need to be aware of? Right. So those type of I just explore it uh, from a standpoint that just as you're asking us, well, why would why would title be important to the probate process? That could be the very first question. And then you just then you just explore that. It's I would sit down in, in a relaxed way and just have those have those questions and say, OK, help me understand better. And that could be that could be some really excellent content if they have some some good valuable information. If it's not really that much different than a standard real estate transaction, you know, in in their eyes. But I would I would really ask them what are the big pitfalls that could come up in the probate process, and let them go. Okay, okay. 
ask right. for example. Thank you. Help. And by the way, I didn't mean to kind of poo-poo the idea of talking to them. You definitely need to be having conversations with anyone and everyone um, with with a title company or an attorney that does closings. Just realize that there's not going to be a, uh, a direct circular benefit back to you, but there is a content benefit to you. And the more you sit down and have these discussions, especially if you can start to interview people and understand and produce your own content, the better it is going to be for your business overall. Um, and I would ask for examples, as a matter of fact, if you do this with a probate or an estate planning attorney, I would ask, hey, what, what, what are some of the craziest things that you've seen happen through probate? Or what are some of the snags that you see people, the biggest mistakes that you see people make to make their process harder? What are the biggest, um, what are the biggest um, things that you see people do that make their job easier? So those are good questions to ask as well, whether it's a, uh, a title company, an attorney that does closings, or a probate attorney, because it's going to help you create that content and have better conversations when you get in front of a, a PR. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Yeah, I've got one All right. thing to add, Thank add, add to do, had to do sure. with the attorney side of this, and that is that the very best way to get an attorney's attention other than buying some of their time and, you know, having that sit down meeting that you're doing, whether you had to pay for it or not, is to take them business. And one of the things that the pre-probate program provides for you, that's a lot of peas in one sentence. Uh, one of the things it provides is the ability to guide a client to an attorney, because in most cases, the uh, unless there's already a family attorney involved, uh, the people that are going to be involved that you initially start talking with in pre-probate don't have an attorney. And so that's a great lead to have that discussion with the attorney rather than looking to say, you know, what can you do for me? Start off by adding value to the attorney that, you know, you've recently expanded your probate business into working with pre-probate and now you find that you have clients that are often looking for an attorney and are you interested in taking on new, uh, you know, new probate, new family law kind of uh, uh, clients in that way and most attorneys are pretty anxious to get new business. So that'd be a great way to make that conversation work well. And then obviously you can lead back and explain all the great things that you do with all the value you provide. And it becomes a no brainer that that attorney is going to start referring business to you. And if they don't, don't refer any business to them, find one that will. Well, that's mm -hmm. a great point, Tim. It's something that hadn't occurred to me that um, in regular probate, we always tell people, Maybe 20%, 25% of your leads are pro se. They don't have an attorney. But pre-probate, it's going to be virtually 100%. I mean, there might be just the outlier that, you know, called an attorney the day dad died or, you know, but for the most part, the vast majority of them are going to need to hire an attorney. What a great way to establish a quid pro quo with an attorney, refer people back and forth. Good good thought. I hadn't, hadn't occurred to me. Okay. All right, sir, does that help? answer all your questions yes it does thanks very much i appreciate it <laughs> all right thanks for participating we appreciate you we have two more in the queue uh plenty of room for more hit star six and then hit one in the meantime next up is phone number ending in four five one one you're up next do i have to hit star six again or no no nah, you're good scott you're good to go buddy <laughs> okay I'm fairly new in the probate side. I definitely have been in real estate for a while, but I send out mail campaigns for buyers and I happen to come across one that's in probate and she responded and now she's in trouble and it's perfect. So the problem right now is, and this is, I'm going to read her last email so you can kind of catch up. We've had a couple conversations about what's going on. Her father passed away almost a year ago. He's on title. She named her son the executor. Now he's occupying the property, pretty much locking him out of everything, not even communicating, not paying rent, or actually he's paying bills with the estate funds. And this is really getting to be, uh, now what do I do to help? You know, what, what can I do? I asked her the last email, I asked her, you know, who's the attorney? You know, let me at least reach out to that guy. He had, she hasn't responded yet, but... I could call her too. I have everything, her name, her number, her 
her email address and everything. So let me just read her last email if I can. And she said yesterday, what, if anything, have you found out? The probate is still in limbo. I have pretty much given up. I want it to end. My father has been dead a year this week. I still have not been able to see anything that was his. I trusted my son as the administrator, but he has locked us out. We can't even receive our mail without waiting for him to come outside. He will not answer our calls or the door. He lives there and won't pay rent. He's paying bills with the state and billing the estate. This was not our agreement. I've not been allowed an inventory and the house looks dilapidated. It makes me sick. Because we talked about our moving concierge service like, you know, I'm lucky I was with the firm that had a network of referral partners for anything from landscaping to you name it. So I'm already set there. Um, and we actually provide updated homes for no cost out of the buyer's seller's pocket. We actually collect at closing. So it's a perfect scenario for people that need to get the most amount of money out of their home and don't have the money to update it. We have contractors that will do it all and we get paid after it sells. So it's a great opportunity for people, but I'm just trying to help this lady, you know, get this thing handled. So that's kind of where I'm at with this one. Does she have a written ask. agreement? I'm sorry. She have a written agreement with him? Well, I haven't seen anything, but she's all I know is that she said, that's not our agreement. Well, that's another thing I'm going to write down. Do you have a written agreement is one of them. Who is currently, who is, is she on title or it's still in her father's name? It's, I just looked it up and it's just him. It's just her father's name on title. Was there a will? Well, that's, a, that's another question. I, like I said, um, let me just write these down because these are questions I need to ask and find out. Do you have an agreement with the son? They might, because she's the he's the executor. But you know, if there was a verbal agreement to do something and it's not in writing, then yeah, he's he's squatting basically. Well, if she named her son as the executor, she would potentially be the person who the court would have had to approve that. But if she is the inheritor, if there's an if there's a will, and she is the inheritor, and the um, the son is uh, not living up to the responsibility as a personal representative, then she will need to get an attorney and petition the court to replace him as the uh, personal administrator and also uh, personal representative and also uh, move to have him evicted from the property. I mean, there's, this is pretty straightforward. It's just like a rental that's there. But the challenge is it depends on if there's any agreements that prohibit that. I mean, if he, if he has an agreement that says I can live in the house until the house gets disposed of and there's no end to that, then she's going to have to get an attorney and she's got a fight on her hands. And it sounds like she's running out of gas. So, you know, you're going to have to get with, uh, get this done to step in and help her understand what her rights are. And again, this is back to that attorney that you were talking to. This is a great, or that we were talking about before. You just need to get an attorney involved in this and examine the legalities of this, find out what the petition was to the court initially, who made it to to name the son as the executor, but he's got to get out as the executor to start with. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking that. And then, you know, I didn't know the right questions. And so these are helping me find out, you know, hey, is there a will? Who's entitled in, of the heirs? I guess, you know, she probably has just... Um, a brother maybe and then a couple of kids but until i see the well or who's you know supposed to get the place but you know if she, if she trusted her son to worth? be yeah how much would you think you know the house worth? well i mean i haven't driven by it um but just based on assessed value on the tax year um which doesn't mean anything about the market here in seattle this market here is crazy but um you know it's probably 500 but 418 is what the assessed value is but again, I don't know the can he, she says it's starting to look dilapidated. So he's not doing anything. He's just squatting, taking advantage of having a free place. And she can't the educate issue. him out. Now I know we can if we go through the right process probably, but those questions you gave me were great. Is you know, if he's the administrator who put him there, if you did, then you need to get an attorney to get him off of it. Then you can make, you know, the uh, eviction attempt and then once you get him out, now we have 
something we can work with. But what about the question I asked her about who's the attorney? If she, I know she has an attorney because they, they already have it. She told me that they have an attorney. So shouldn't I try to build a relationship with that guy or at least reach out and find well, out who sure. it is so I can sure. talk to it, it sounds like that she's not – she's being ill-advised. From the standpoint, everything I'm telling you, the attorney should have already been dealing with. Uh, is she not communicating with the attorney? I mean, that's another question. Have you had, if you've got an attorney, what's the attorney doing? Because it sounds like to me he's sitting on his hands, not getting anything done. Bruce, go ahead. Your tongue, Jim thinks your tongue is bleeding. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to call her today after I got off this call to say, okay, who's the attorney? And if you talk to him, and if so, how can we, you know, work with him to get this thing moving forward? Yeah. Because she said it was in limbo. And I'm like, okay, well, can you fire your attorney? There's, I guess you could. There's three Bruce, things go here. Ahead, Bruce. Yeah. His address, Tim has, has addressed um, all of them. So really, really fast recap on that. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to take off with new stuff. So um, it, is there a written agreement? Uh, very, very, very unlikely there's a written agreement between him and the other heirs that would allow him to behave this way. Very unlikely, but it could be. Um, is there a will? Okay, that's right. And who's the attorney? Um, it, I would um, be really surprised if the attorney was not uh, was um, was not just sitting on his hands, slacking, um, not paying any attention to this. He's probably given the son a list of things to do. Um, and the uh, and the son has probably not done anything. Now he likely has only communicated with the son. So if the attorney isn't willing to take some action or offer some advice, which um, he may or she may not be willing to, um, then I I think you need a new attorney. You need to repetition for a new executor to be assigned. Um, and if, as long as the family is willing to go at the son, he has and, – and as long as her story is true, um, keep that in mind. Her story right. may be missing some major, major pieces here. He might not be as bad of a guy as it sounds, but right. it does sound like he's a pretty bad guy. If she's willing to, she, she needs to go after him for um, violating his fiduciary duties to the estate. He has an obligation to uh, – to, to protect the value of the additional heirs and a legal obligation. And if he's using estate money to pay his personal bills and his living expenses without an agreement, she needs to be willing to go after her own flesh and blood son. And if she's not willing to do that and kind of get into the gutter a little bit, then you need to know about it up front. So um, I think that immediately having her go get her own legal representation is uh, it, maybe the second step. The first step is to talk to the attorney that's already um, supposed to be acting on behalf of the family and find out if that attorney has some information that she doesn't have. And uh, maybe he's just sitting on his hands waiting on the sun to get some paperwork back that he's clearly not going to turn back over. Yeah, and I – And Chuck, you, know, you had something. Title. Chuck had – go ahead. Go ahead finish. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just said I have a good title in escrow company. I could open title. I mean, there's no law against opening title, even though I don't have a listing, you know, just to kind of dig into some things and see what's on. I'm just looking at real there you go. right now to see who, you know, quickly, because I couldn't find the paper in the file that I'd already printed out for the meeting. So I was like scrambling to find it. Um, but anyway, yeah, the son or the dad's on the title still, and that's all that shows up. But if I open title, it'll dig up some more stuff, and then I'll get a hold of her, and she wants my help. I mean, this was a perfect campaign before I even got involved with all the leads, but as I was getting more and more info on the leads, all the leads program, I was like, okay, here's my first one that came from my own marketing, but still, it needs the same, you know, care. <laughs> yep. Sure. I had yeah, I, I had two I think, more. two more. Go ahead, Chuck. Chuck's up next. Go ahead. So, so one of the things, do you have um, online, I'm, I'm assuming you're in King County up there in, in Seattle? I'm, I'm personally, and I, I'd have to verify this. Actually, no, this property is in Snohomish County, and I'm personally in okay. Snohomish. You know, I okay. like to stay out of King County if I can. <laughs> okay. So, so when you're 
I mean, if you go on to the register of wills, I mean, there you sh there should be some some site that you can look up the public records for case files, specifically probate, to see what was what's been done so far in the case. I mean, has have they even opened probate? That's that would be the the first step. You can see what step they're at. You know, to the point that okay, so if he's, if I'm he's not familiar with yet. that. Yeah. She said they've been in probate and it's in limbo. So obviously I think what you said yeah. earlier, somebody said earlier was that the attorney may not be doing his job or enough of it. And it's just sitting there and she's wondering what the hell is going on. I'm not familiar okay. with how, are you just talking about the uh, records, the Snohomish County records? Just, Look up that and see. In my local County, I have the ability to open up the case file online and see what steps what what stage what all has been done they record all that at the at the register so um if you want to schedule a a strategy coaching call we can dig in online together and we can take a look at that if uh if you've got availability in your in your calendar sure i mean yeah absolutely i mean this could potentially be a good you know listing at some point but helping her get this resolved is my main priority and that will lead to you know she wants to probably sell it and they don't know for sure but obviously that's not what she planned for him to be there forever and just move in and but i i have some target you know questions answered that i need to pursue and then um who am i talking to about scheduling a coaching call this is Coach Chuck. So if you go into Chuck, the training okay. drop down menu, yeah, go to the professional real estate coaching page and that's where you can schedule the monthly strategy call. We'll get it figured out. All right, guys. Well, all that's, right. That's a start. So thank hey, you. Hey, Scott, two, two additional questions that are very obvious. It, it sounds like the, the lady you're dealing with is already pretty motivated, but if, if you want to really stoke her motivation um i don't think you mentioned uh is there a mortgage and is somebody paying it uh because the possibility of it getting foreclosed is going to greatly diminish uh the equity that's there uh right. do, you, do you know that or have you have you determined that or not i um have let me look here in my database notes and see i printed you know, information, and I might have some notes somewhere that I'm not looking at. I don't know. Oh, that's I'm, okay. Uh, that's just something you can certainly address, though, with her. And if, oh, if yeah, she's, absolutely. it sounds like, she, yeah, that would certainly further stoke her motivation to, uh, you know, to, to even if it means going against her son, there's a lot of money for everybody involved, possibly including her son. So, you know, the more, yeah. the more um, bullets like you have like that to stoke her motivation, the better. All right, sir. Well, we appreciate it. Let us know. Uh, please check in with Chuck and let us know how it turns out. You said you had two questions. One was being oh, go ahead. mortgage. What? Another one? What was the second one? No, you said you had two oh. thoughts. Oh, yeah. Is there, <laughs> I don't want to miss is there, <laughs> is there, is there a mortgage and is somebody paying it? If this is the son, is, if this is the son supposed to be paying rent right. that would cover the mortgage, uh, you know, is anybody paying the mortgage? Is it in danger of getting foreclosed? I'm kind of thinking there's no mortgage and he's just using utility bills and stuff with the estate, yeah. billing the estate. Maybe the case. But I okay. can certainly talk to her and she would probably know. But getting the but attorney there is, is the, the first way that, Does he have access to funds out of the estate? You say he's billing the estate, but who's paying them? Well, I don't know. That's a good question. I'm going to write that of, down. You got, you got a lot of I don't knows. And I'm just going to say this straight up. Before you take the next step in this, you got a bunch of digging to do. And you got to get with the attorney and the lady and do a three-way conference call right there. That's the first place you need to start because okay. you got way too many things you don't know the answers to. Okay. No That's judgment. why I'm on this call. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. I'm just saying that all the rest of this is important, but until you have that call, you got no reason to go forward because if you don't get a fundamental understanding of the the legal standing and relationships here, you got nowhere to go. You've got to get that to happen, or you you're wasting your time to do this because everything right. else is speculative. Right. Yep, sounds good to me. 
Okay. All right. Thank well, you, thank you, and let us know how it turns out, please. We appreciate it. Uh, you bet. Right now, the next up in the queue is phone number ending in 1108. You're up next. Uh, hey, guys. Thanks for thanks for having me. It's Brandon Durant from New York. Um, I have a few questions, if you have the bandwidth for it. Uh, I guess to start sure. off. Sure. Um, uh, can you can you process a property in short sale? Uh, can you do a short sale for a property in uh, in probate? That's my first question. Hundred yes, hundred yeah, percent okay. yes. And okay. I happen to know somebody that'll do that for you. My wife has done over two thousand short sales, so just reach out to us. She she has a short sale company. She's done many in uh, uh not well by by many. She's probably done a couple dozen uh, that were in probate. Uh, the 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 key there is the heirs are probably not going to get anything as far as proceeds. They they may get strange as it seems. Um, there are times when the bank will still give a relocation allowance, even though the you know the person that owns the property is already permanently relocated. Uh, so there is a potential that they may be able to get a relocation allowance. But you'd be surprised how often um, the heirs just want to do the right thing. You know, even though there's no equity, they really don't want to see grandma's house go to foreclosure. You know, they want to do what's right for the neighborhood. And the nice thing about doing a um, a probate, uh, a short sale on, on one is that, uh, again, the owner is deceased, so there's almost no documentation required. You don't need financial statements. You don't need bank accounts. You don't need income statements. You just need the authorization from the heirs that that, you know, you have the authority to do it. And so, yeah, there's there's no reason that it shouldn't work. The banks are just as motivated not to foreclose. It's you just have to deal with the seller that's motivated to be okay to do it. And sometimes there'll be other assets in the estate that they don't want it to get foreclosed and have any possibility, you know, depending on whether there was, um, you know, the owner was on the hook for it or not. But there may be reasons why they don't want the foreclosure financially. But more often than not, it's just they're willing to do it because it's the right thing to do. But just okay. reach out to us if you need some help help with it. Uh, I'll give you a phone number real quick. It's uh, for the short sale company. It's nine five four five eight four zero. One second. That's all right. Nine, okay. Nine five four five eight four zero 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 zero. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Perfect. Um, Anything else? That. Yep. I got. You said you had three questions. More. Yep. Uh, so, uh, can you do a sub two on a, on a property in probate if the debt, if the mortgage is in the the, the deceased's name? How how would that work? Um, Boy, I have to give that some thought. Yeah, Bruce, go ahead. Tricky, right? That yeah, it is tricky. Be, I don't has to be taken care of in a certain amount of time. So. Um, you, you really have to be careful on structuring that sub two because it's usually like six months, um, depending on the state, usually somewhere around six months. So it doesn't give you a lot of time to um, sort out, sort out the details and get it, get it, get title transferred. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks for that. Uh, next, let, let's say, um, I know you guys are always asking uh, like a question. I think it's a, what, what do you say, Bruce, a positive hook question? Um, did you get the letter yep. of testament, uh, testamentary yet? Now, let's say if mm -hmm. they say yes or no, where do you take the conversation at, from there, and and what's what what do you, what are you looking for from that from that question? So, what I'm looking for that question, I ask that what, when I'm on the phone, I ask that question really early. Um, it's more of just a conversation starter. Um, so. Um, if they say, yeah, I have that, hey, you know, um, do you have a quick second for me to run over? Um, that's good because uh, I, what I do doesn't really make sense for you if you don't have that. So do you have a quick second for me to run over what I do? Okay, so I would just immediately take that into your um, your quote unquote, your, your pitch. Um, so I would ask it early in the conversation during the introduction phase of your conversation and then move to your pitch after they say yes. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, yep. Yep. Is, is, is it bandwidth? Can I ask another question? Sure. Yeah. All, these. all right. Um, I, I think the, the gentleman before me, or maybe two before me, he mentioned questions to ask attorneys when you're having that consultation. 
or one on one conversation? Mm -hmm. Is there anywhere I can find like a list of questions or maybe an episode I could listen to? For attorneys? Yes. Um, Jim, Tim, do you guys know if there might be something yeah, well, floating can, around can, on YouTube? Yeah, I mean, I can help you with that. One of the things that you need to realize is that all of our conference calls are indexed on the website. And if you go in and look into the search bar on there and just type in attorney, you're going to find pretty much everywhere that we've made a bunch of references to the attorneys. And if you were on at the very beginning of the call, this is our 365th one of these calls and probably at least every other time and often every time we're having some questions pertaining to attorneys and there's probably a hundred different questions that we've gone over. I'm not trying to blow you off. We don't have them all in one place. It's a good question to ask, but um, you know, it's kind of, we, we, we dish out the pearls kind of when they come up, like we did on the last call there, most of them are kind of subject related having to do with what you, what you do that with. Um, so, I mean, I, I would suggest you hit the search bar uh, and, and take a quick, quick look that way, and it'll bring you to each of them that there's a reference in the, the synopsis of the call that we've done, and it'll give you a place in the call that you can find that. Okay, awesome. I, I was also going to... I was going to also say that search bar is pretty intuitive. You you might want to even put in questions for attorneys. There might just be a one that's labeled that specific. There may not be, but um, you know, there especially in the last year, year and a half, I think we've gotten a lot better with labeling them and um and giving notes on the calls so you, you, I don't think it'd be a whole lot of uh, you know, play around with it a little time like a little bit like you would Google and uh you may just be able to zero in on that without listening to a hundred calls. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, I, have, I have just one more. Sorry. Um, sure. So sure. let's say, uh, let's say you have data where there's no personal representative info. You, you don't know who they are. Um, I guess, you know, any recommendations on trying to find how to find out where um, you, you can get that info and would you even recommend mailing if you don't have that info? I'm what are you starting out with? What are you starting out with as a lead, bud? Um, can you can you can you repeat the question? Sure. In other words, you said, "What if you don't have it? Are you are you a subscriber of from I, all the leads?" Or yeah, 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 I am. I, yeah, I am. I was just I, so a friend of mine. I was telling Coach Chuck yesterday. We just had a coaching call yesterday morning. I have a friend of mine who ordered data, not from all the leads. And he's like, Brandon, man, I don't have any personal representative data. So I'm, you know, I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know what to do, you know, and he wants me to help him out. And I'm like, man, I, you know, I don't know how you should tackle it. Cause he just has a bunch of phone numbers in terms of mailing and, you know, trying to find out this information. So that's why I'm asking you guys since you guys, you know, know a lot more than I do. <laughs> sure. So, I mean, the real issue there is, you know, that, that that's obviously you're in the right place because you get our leads. And obviously we know that's the most, if you got nobody to talk to, you got nobody to talk to. So, um, you know, that's the problem. The issue in terms of finding that out, the only thing they can do is to try to, you know, dig it out of the court records or whatever. And is he in your uh, local market? No, he's in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, you might want to, you might want to recommend to him that to, uh, get serious about doing this. And I know that this sounds facetious and I don't mean that, but we're real proud of what we do. And, uh, you know, encourage him to become a subscriber and I'll do a little commercial for this as well. The issue is that we encourage you to do that. We pay affiliate commissions for referrals. So get yourself set up as an affiliate and then refer him over and get him subscribing to our, our leads. If he's serious about wanting to pursue probate, we do the work. You know why we're doing this business. Get him in and let him do it the way you do it. That's the best answer you can give him because otherwise he's going to waste a lot of time trying to figure it out with the courts and all of that and not knowing whether he's got good leads or anything else. And, you know, we do a great job. So, All right. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. All I right. appreciate your time. You well, it's a good thing. You're only allowed six, only allowed six questions <laughs> and you used up your max. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You didn't, if you have more, we we got a couple minutes. Are you good? Are you good? Did we answer them all? No, I, I think I'm good. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's a great way to end the call, guys. I want to thank you, each and every one of you, 
for being here today. I want to particularly thank those that actively participated. I want to challenge each of you, take one thought, one thing that inspired you on this call, go out and put it into practice, and please come back next Thursday and share your results with the group. Have a great week. We'll talk to you all same time next Thursday. Take care.